Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today with us at Chint Power Systems and Tago Energy. We are excited to discuss our PV rapid shutdown system offering today with you. So just a little bit of housekeeping first. Everyone attending should see a bar with buttons at the bottom of your screen. The chat function will be used by us presenters to send comments and add links to resources related to the topics that we'll be discussing. And also please find the Q&A button where you can submit your questions throughout the webinar for the Q&A session at the end, which we'll leave some time for. My name is Anton Patton. I am an applications engineer with CPS America, and I will be presenting today with Gary Hethcote, one of the sales engineers at Tygo Energy. Just a quick overview of our agenda. We'll start with an introduction of both Chint Power Systems and Tygo Energy. Then we'll get into the rapid shutdown requirements and NEC Article 690.12 code. Gary will be going over the Tygo TS4F rapid shutdown project product, and I'll discuss the complete turnkey Tygo rapid shutdown solutions that CPS offers for the CNI market. For those of you less familiar with Chint Power Systems, CPS is a division of a larger diverse energy company called the Chint Group. The Chint Group is a global publicly traded company with over $9 billion in revenue and has been in operation for over 30 years. Here in North America, we focused on the three-phase string inverter market, but have now expanded to become a complete energy solutions provider for solar and storage projects. We have now shipped over four gigawatts of three-phase string inverters in the U.S. with a market-leading number one share in the CNI market, including our partner sales. Our team prides ourselves on being focused on service for our customers, from pre-sales and engineering support to logistics, order fulfillment, and service through the life of our product. And Gary, I will pass it to you to give a quick intro to Tygo. All right, thanks Anton. So Tygo Energy, we've been around for about 13 years. We are headquartered in California, in Campbell currently, and we do operate globally. We're a global company, very uh, diverse uh, employee base, and we have people all over the world to, to help out with projects. We have been a leader in MLPE for many years. We started out, of course, with uh, products that were capable of what we now call rapid shutdown right out of the gate in 2008. And so we have a lot of experience in doing this. We have shipped a lot of product, actually. Our unit, is, unit volume is now reaching up to 4 million. We have ex experienced a lot of growth over the last few years. And we, of course, are the leader in module level rapid shutdown. Thanks, Anton. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, so I, I also want to mention that CPS has worked with the Tygo team to be able to provide complete rapid shutdown packages for CNI rooftop projects. So the inverters, modules, and Tygo TS4 AF and 2F devices can be purchased from CPS and shipped directly to the project site. So installers and EPCs have the advantage of working with one vendor for orders, deliveries, and customer support for all the equipment needed to meet rapid shutdown requirements. And so Gary, I will pass it off to you 
to answer what are these rapid shutdown requirements? All right, great. Thanks, Anton. And by the way, I just want to thank Anton and CPS for being a great partner. And I think it's a great uh, thing that we're able to offer this kind of solution in all in one package from one vendor, including the, the uh, module electronics and everything. I think it's really super. So thank you for that. Um, let's talk about the requirements. So some of you may be really experienced. Some of you may have been around a long time and you might think, oh, I know all about this stuff. So, but let me challenge you a little bit because I think there may be some uh, one or two things you might learn. So for example, let's say I have a shed um, and I have, it has just three walls and a, and a roof and I want to put PV on it. And I, inside the shed, I want to hang my inverter and I've got a, su a sub panel I'm going to tie into. Do I need rapid shutdown? Think about that one. Um, also look at the system in the picture. It's a carport system, okay? What about that one? Do I need rapid shutdown for that? So those are two examples of, of areas where people may not realize actually what all is, it, is in play. So the first example, and let's just, the first bullet there, on or in buildings. Okay, that's a pretty vague statement. And buildings are normally defined to be any structure with roof and walls. So this first example I gave, the shed example, is one that's a little bit in the gray area. And I think that's one where some um, jurisdictions may enforce it and some may not. But by strictly by the, by the definitions and by the NEC, um, that structure will be required to comply, all right? Now, the other example um, in, the, in the picture there, that system, by the way, which by the way is beautiful. I don't know if you can notice it's all uh, double glass and the sun shines through, it's su super beautiful system. Um, and normally we think of ground mount or carport systems as not having to comply. But I can tell you that this system did have to comply. And maybe you can guess why, and I'll tell you. The reason is, and it goes to bullet number two, that ground-mounted systems are exempted, but only, only if their equipment is housed in a building whose sole purpose is to house PV. In the case of the system in the picture, the DC conductors went down through the parking structure and into a, into a building. Um, and because those conductors entered a building whose sole purpose was not just to house PV, that system was required to comply, All right? So hopefully a few of you learned something there. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Great. Okay, rapid shutdown across the country. As you can see, most states at this point are now on either NEC 2017 or 2020. There are a few still on 2014 and earlier, but not too many. And that number is shrinking pretty much on a weekly, if not monthly basis. All right. So that's why, of course, um, everyone is looking to this and, and trying to understand and what it takes to comply and so on. So, um, all right. So next slide. Okay, so what are the requirements? So for 2017 and beyond, the requirement is that you have to have all conductors within the array boundary down to 80 volts within 30 seconds, okay? And that array boundary is within one foot of all modules, okay? Now that means all conductors. That means any exposed wiring, okay? Underneath the, the, the array, and then all the conductors leaving the array boundary and going down to the inverter have to be down to 30 volts within 30 seconds, all right? Now, the 2014 requirements were a little bit different, but I'm not gonna go into those. Most states are not, um, are not using those anymore anyway, all right? But those are requirements and, uh, you know, and I emphasize all because we'll talk about in a minute how this may have some slightly unexpected consequences. All right, next slide. All right, so now here's what we're looking at at the array level. So you can see on the array illustration there on the lower right, we're showing the backs of the modules. Okay, and we're seeing all of our conductors that are involved. And here we have actually a dual unit, a TS4A2F, that's actually serving two modules. But you can see there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of conductors under there, 
some of which just go from the module to the uh, MLPE, the, the module electronics. Okay. What about those conductors? Do those ever get de-energized? There's a question. They don't, right? They never do. As long as there's light on the modules, those conductors are always going to be energized. So now remember our limit. So we have a limit of 80 volts. So those conductors have to be under 80 volts, even after shutdown. And of course, always, because they're never going to be um, de-energized. So guess what we're running up against uh, now with some of the newer, more powerful modules? We may get to the point where some of those modules are putting out more than 80 volts. But we're not there yet, so we're not worried about it. But it's something to think about. And especially if you're connecting modules in series, because if, guess what? If you've got two modules that are producing more than 40 volts, if you connect them in series, they're producing more than 80 volts, all right? Okay, so something to think about. But this is what it looks like. We've got our module electronics, and those electronics are required to shut off the power coming from the modules, okay? They're either every, in the case of Tygo, they're either at every module or one for every two modules. Okay, and what triggers rapid shutdown? Okay, so we call it AC loss. And really what that means is if AC power to the system is lost, then rapid shutdown is required to commence. So if we have a power outage, a grid power outage, for example, then that the system is required to go into rapid shutdown, okay? Now, inside the inverter, you can see at the lower right, we have a rapid shutdown transmitter. What that transmitter does it transmits what we call a keep alive signal. As long as it's powered up and it's operating, it sends out that keep alive signal. And the module electronics, they listen for it. And as long as they hear it, then they know the system is alive and working and they continue to pass their power. When that keep alive signal goes away, that's when they go into shutdown. So, the way to initiate rapid shutdown for the for the module electronics is to simply shut off the transmitter. Now there's a generic term for this this uh, transmitter that's called the initiator. So you may hear, hear the term in initiator or initiation device. And in this case, it's what we call an RSS transmitter. For other products, it may be called something different. In the case of our Tigos wireless products, the CCA is the initiator, but this mechanism works exactly the same way. Okay, hopefully that's all clear. And of course, Tigo and Chint um, both, both meet all of the requirements for all versions of the NEC from 2014 all the way up to 2020. Great, next slide. Now, here's another thing where even the most seasoned among you may learn something. So let me ask a question. Are all systems installed in, let's just, let's just say the U.S., are they all required to use UL-listed equipment? And I'll ask that in two different ways because there are two different ways to UL list, okay? So one is the equipment listing. So any you know, individual piece of equipment can submit to UL for testing and get listed as a, an individual piece of equipment, right? So an inverter company, they can submit uh, and they can get a UL listing for their, for their inverter. Same thing with Tygo. We can submit to have our, our TS4s, our module electronics listed with UL. Is that enough? Well, and what about the what about the NEC? Does the NEC actually require UL listing? Okay, so there's some questions. You may think about those and see if you know what the answer is. And so, but the the real answer is that the NEC does require the use of listed equipment. All right, listed equipment, and that's right there in the NEC. You can go look it up. But what does that mean? What does listed mean? What it means is that the equipment and the system, which means all of the equipment together, must be listed by what, what is sometimes called an NRTL, 
a nationally recognized testing laboratory. Okay. Now, they don't say it has to be listed by UL. There are other nationally recognized testing laboratories, but for all intents and purposes, UL is, is the definitely the leading um, player in that, in that space. So effectively, it means UL. Most, most people list with UL, all right? So that may be something you're not aware of. And, and of course, why is it that, that the NEC requires listing, okay? Now, because there are other options for compliance, okay? So they, the, if you read the NEC, it gives you the, the option of li using listed equipment and systems, or you can do what's called field labeling. What does that mean? Basically, that means you have to hire somebody to go out and test the system. This person has to be, of course, certified and so on. And that's very expensive, right? And the whole idea behind listing and why the NEC requires use, the use of listed equipment and systems is because they don't want inspectors to have to be, have to do all that and have to deal with all that, right? Because they come out on a job site and they see that the, the installer does not have have evidence of listed equipment. So then then they what do they do, right? So they don't want to deal with that. So if you use listed equipment, then and the inspector knows what they're doing, you know, and they can see evidence that you your your equipment is listed both individually and as a system. Then they know they're good to go, and they don't need to test rapid shutdown. Okay, that's why it is. But of course, as I'm sure a lot of you installers know, there may be some inspectors that will still ask you to test it, and they want to see. I've I've gotten a lot of calls from people who who've had that. All right, so those are the requirements and maybe now you know a little bit more about what exactly what they are. And some inspectors may of course not be that knowledgeable, they might not know all this, but I can tell you that in some jurisdictions, especially if they're inspecting large commercial and, and uh, utility systems, they'll, they'll know, they'll know. Uh, all right, enough said, next slide. Okay, so let's talk about how does Tygo address this? What does Tygo do to help you comply with rapid shutdown? And there's a lot of different facets of this based on what I've just gone through, okay? So Tygo does more testing than any other vendor in terms of testing module electronics for rapid shutdown. We test with UL and the inverter vendors to make sure that all of the products are tested and listed together. Remember, I said it, the, U, the NEC requires that systems be tested together and listed together as a system. That means that, that, that the NRTL, in this case UL, has to test the entire system, including all of the equipment, okay? And we do that with UL, okay? And it's not, it's not inexpensive, right? But we do it because we want to make sure that our customers have a good experience. We want to make sure that everything works together exactly as designed and as intended and as required. All right. So let's talk about how Tygo complies. Next slide. All right. So we're, we're going to focus on the fire safety products today, what we call at Tygo the fire safety products, and they all end in F. So we do have three different ways to deploy this technology. Now, the base technology, the way the electronics work is the same for all of these. It's different packaging, it's different uh, combinations of things, okay? But otherwise, TS4F is TS4F, all right? So the first one is integrated, and that's where Tygo is actually built onto the module, okay? And then the next one is the single unit, TS4AF, and then the dual unit, TS4A2F, All right? TS4A2F, as I showed in the illustration before, is one, uh, one product, one unit for two modules. Next slide. Okay, so here's what the singles look like. It's one for every module, all right? And then the Tiger units are connected in series. And then we have the transmitter, of course, in the inverter. Okay, next slide. Now here's the dual unit, right? And we saw this earlier. So now TS4A2F, one for two modules. 
Now the A2F, especially for larger systems, is gonna be the most cost-effective way to do rapid shutdown, all right? Because we only need one for two modules. They install very quickly. We'll get into that, all right? Next, next slide. Okay, so here are the reasons why it's the most cost-effective. Half the hardware, right? Half the number of module electronics, half the number of TS4s. Faster installations, because you're only installing half the number of TS4s, okay? Fewer connections. And rock solid reliability, like all TS4s, this is the most reliable module electronics on the planet, no question. Built to scale, right? So we have some very large systems out there. We have a system that we installed last year, or we helped a customer install, with 33,000 modules. And that system scales quite well. All right, next slide. Here's just a little bit about the specifications. Now we're looking at the dual unit, the TS4A2F in this case, but the specs for the single unit are really just the same as, this, as each channel. Okay, so we call each half of this unit the uh, channels, okay? So 500 watts per channel, so that's effectively per module. So you're good to up, up to a 500 watt module. And then for voltage, 90 volts, for current, 15 amps. And you do need to derate for voltage and current. And if you have a module that you're not sure about, um, go ahead and send it to us. Our, um, our email is training at tygoenergy.com. You can always send us a cut sheet and we can check it for you if you're in doubt. All right, our, our um, product comes standard with MC4 connectors. And perhaps most importantly for this context, it's UL listed, all of the TS4F is, is UL listed with the Chint uh, SCA 20, 25, 50, and 60 KTL products. All right, and, and by the way, I, th I really think, I just, I'm gonna say it one more time. I think it's great that Chint is offering all of these products in a package. So as a customer, you can just come to Chint and you can buy everything from them, including all the Tygo units um, and everything in, all in one package. And that way you can go to Chint for, for service. And if, if they need help from us, they'll get, they'll get it. And we'll, we'll give you great customer service. But sometimes it helps just to have one vendor to deal with. Awesome. Okay, next slide. Okay, just a few things about installation guidelines and then we'll wrap up. But um, all TS4s, of course, always connect to the module first and then to the string. And the DC loop, for the TS4F, all versions should not be more than a thousand feet. That's from the positive terminal at the inverter out to the string and then back on the home run to the negative terminal. And also if you are doing a larger system and you have multiple transmitters or multiple inverters in the case of the integrated transmitter, those conductors should be separated. Okay, and we have a best practices document for that if, you, um, if you're wondering about the details. All right. Next slide. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Anton at this point to talk about the CPS part of the solution. Awesome, thanks Gary. Yeah, thanks for that, that overview on the Tiger TS4F solution. So now I'm gonna go over the turnkey uh, Tygo rapid shutdown solution offered by CPS uh, in the full package offering for a commercial uh, PV projects. As Gary mentioned earlier, the Tygo transmitter sends the, the Kivalai signal to uh, the TS4 AF or 2F devices at the array. And what our team at CPS has done is we've integrated that Tygo transmitter into our uh, Tygo rapid shutdown wire boxes for our 25 kilowatt. 50 and 60 kilowatt inverters. So no external components or enclosures are needed um, for rapid shutdown to be initiated um, in the inverter. And our goal with this design was to make the system installation simple and easy. 
for, for installers out in the field. So basically the DC conductors are connected to the directly to the inverter wire box and the AC is connected to the wire box, um, which is then connected to the inverter as well as that Tygo transmitter that's integrated. All right. And we have also optimized the wire boxes in the inverter, the rapid shutdown wire boxes for NEC 2017 and 2020 codes by removing the negative fuses, since those are not, no longer needed um, in, the, in the latest codes, which allows more working space for installers and technicians in the wire box. And these, these inverter models, the 25 kW shown here and the 50 and 60 kilowatt models have a 480 volt output on the AC side. But we're also excited to announce that we will soon have our 25 kilowatt 208 volt output inverter product for, for rooftop projects with 208 volt service interconnections. And CPS has leveraged the hardware and form factor of our popular uh, 50 and 60 kilowatt inverter model to develop this 208 volt solution. This new model is in the process of certification and testing and will be offered with a Tygo rapid shutdown wire box like our 25 kilowatt 480 volt uh, and 50 and 60 kilowatt inverter models. We are accepting pre-orders for this inverter now. So if you do have a 208 volt project that you're working on and are interested, please reach out to our team. So one of the Tygo rapid shutdown solutions that Gary mentioned is the TS4 AF product, which is installed onto each module. So it's a simple, low cost, easy to install solution to meet rapid shutdown requirements. And the, the TS4F devices with the Tygo transmitter and inverter are all tested and certified together as a UL listed PV rapid shutdown system when used with our 25, 50 and 60 kilowatt inverters. And like Gary mentioned, all the components from the inverter with integrated Tygo rapid shutdown transmitter and components, the Tygo module level devices, as well as PV modules can all be purchased through CPS. Now the TS4A2F product, as Gary mentioned, allows the installation of one device for every two modules, significantly lowering the equipment cost and module level devices needed. And the TS4A2F has also been UL certified as a PV rapid shutdown system when used with our 25, 50, and 60 kilowatt inverters to meet the NEC 2017 or 2020 rapid shutdown requirements. And also I'll mention if, if, there's, if you have an inverter with the Tygo rapid shutdown wire box that has that transmitter integrate in it, it can be used with either the Tygo TS4 AF, the single unit, or the dual TS4 A 2F. So interchangeable, there aren't two different, different transmitters for the different products. And so CPS has done uh, a lot of work with the Tygo engineering team and a lot of testing diligence to ensure the proper functionality of the TS4F products and our inverters as a system. And so far, CPS has focused on qualifying simple, cost-effective solutions with rapid shutdown functions only. So that's the, the F products, the TS4F, 
TS4AF and TS4A2F products. And in addition to certifying the rapid shutdown functionality of the solution, CPS and Tygo have gone beyond that and performed further diligence and testing, both in our R&D labs as well as field testing to confirm the compatibility and performance of the products when used together. So making sure, you know, all of the, the systems are, are checked and there's no, there's no impacts on the inverter or system performance uh, when these products are used together. And like Gary mentioned, CPS um, provides technical support for the Tygo rapid shutdown products that we ship. Uh, as well as the CPS inverters, obviously. Um, so our team at CPS can, can be the first phone call if there are any issues in, in the system that occur. And, you know, that's, that's definitely been a big, big advantage to avoid any finger pointing when, you, you know, you have multiple vendors with um, multiple products uh, in a system working together. Um, so, yeah. CPS can, can definitely be, be the support there and, and really um, help with, you know, the, the entire system out in the field. All right. And yeah, so Gary mentioned that, you know, the, the Tygo MLPE products are, are definitely a, a proven, proven product out in the field. Um, and kind of looking at the CPS inverter and Tygo rapid shutdown solution, um, it's, it's not only, you know, certified as a system, but also has proven field performance uh, over many sites, over a hundred different rapid shutdown projects in operation or under construction. And that number is growing very quickly. Um, CPS has shipped over 55,000 of the Tygo TS4 uh, F products with our inverters to customers for their projects, um, for these rapid shutdown projects. And the, the feedback we've received from, from our customers has, has been positive with systems running smoothly, installations going well, and contractors liking the, the simple installation of the integrated rapid shutdown wire boxes that have the Tygo components um, already in there. Uh, so, so no other components need to be connected or installed. All right, and yeah, just wanted to kind of briefly mention a couple site examples. One is a 232 kilowatt project in Massachusetts and another 100 kilowatt project in, in Ohio. And these are just a couple examples of um, commercial rooftop projects that needed to comply with NEC 2017 rapid shutdown requirements. And, and they've done so successfully with, by using the TS4 AF devices, the Tygo uh, module level devices, the single for uh, each module and also utilizing the integrated wire box in the CPS inverters. And to date, these systems have been running smoothly without issues uh, in performance or operation. And so these, these are just a couple examples of commercial rooftops, and there are many others, um, larger uh, as well as some smaller than these as well. So to summarize, CPS can be can supply the, the complete solution for CNI rooftop projects, including the, the Tygo devices, the inverters, the integrated inverters, PV modules, as well as data communications or control solutions, or any other accessories that may be needed um, for these projects. So Basically, CPS can be the single source for all components needed uh, for the Tygo TS4F 
rapid shutdown solution um, to meet the, the 2017 uh, or 2020 requirements from NEC. All right. So, yeah, if, if you have a rapid shutdown project that needs a solution to, to meet these latest requirements from NEC, um, please reach out to our team. My contact information is below, as well as our sales team who can support you uh, if you do have any questions or um, have projects that you would like to look at with us. And with that, um, that's the end of our, our slides. And I will now open it up to our Q&A session. I'll take a look at what questions we have that have come in. Hi, Anton, this is Gary. Um, yeah, I've been yeah. busily typing away and I think I've answered everything. Um, we mm -hmm. can go over some of them. Actually, there are some that are kind of interesting, uh, which we could go over if you like. Um, let's see now, I haven't really looked at the chat window, but uh, I've been looking at the Q&A. So, um, but there are some sure. interesting questions. Um, yeah, and uh, okay, so one, uh, there was one question about a carport structure. I think I covered that, uh, but um, it, what re really matters is where the conductors go, right? If the conductors enter a building that's, that's used for anything other than PV, then yes, you, you have to comply. All right, and is another one, good one, is TS4A2F available on the market now? It is a new product, but it is shipping, absolutely shipping. So check with a distributor or uh, call Tygo Sales. Um, another good question about bifacials, because I get this one fairly often. And what do you, what do you need to do for bifacials? Uh, all bifacial modules, if you look on the data sheet, they will show you a, uh, a maximum bifacial boost. Okay, you do need to use that those figures to determine compatibility. Okay, so it will give you say a maximum uh, I don't know fifteen percent uh, boost, and you may think I you know I'm never gonna get that to that value um, because maybe you're installing on a surface that's not the ideal albedo or whatever, um, but you still need to use those values. We have seen those values actually um, hit and even exceeded in some cases. So that's what you do, check those, and then you can just check it for compatibility like any other uh, module. And of course, if you're in doubt, um, just uh, give, us, give us a call or send us an email, um, training at tygoenergy.com, and we'll check it for you. Um, question, do you, not, do you offer other connectors besides MC4? That depends, and that's on a case-by-case -case basis, um, but if, if, the, if the project is large, um, then we may be able to offer a different connector. A lot of times though, what people will do is they'll, they'll use whips or adapters to go from one connector to the other. And of course, as probably a lot of you know, you do have to match connectors, right? And that means all connectors mating in the system with each other have to be of both the same type and the same manufacturer, okay? And that can be a little bit tricky when you've got modules that use other than MC4 and, um, you know, any kind of mix of connectors. But it is required by the NEC, and if you get called in it, you uh, called on that, you will fail the inspection. All right. Yeah, and, and Gary, I'll, I'll add a little to that. So all yeah. of the TS4 uh, devices that are supplied by CPS have the, have the MC4 connectors on them. Um, and so that, that's our standard for, for what we ship uh, with our inverters from CPS. But like Gary mentioned, if, if you do have uh, a large project and um, you need a different connector, we, can, um, we might be able to work something out. Great, yeah, thanks Anton. Um, so continuing down, uh, question you mentioned the parking canopy, it did require rapid shutdown. What were the RSD devices mounted? So those, yes, correct, those were frameless modules. And what that system used were integrated Tygo. Those were frameless modules with integrated Tygo as the junction box. And in, the, in that case, they were TS4O uh, units. All right, um, TS4AF is good for 90 volts, but really limited to 80 volts per the NEC, right? Haha, -ha. yeah, somebody's paying attention. 
right? Because we talked about this. So the, the conductors between the module junction box and the TS4 are always energized, right? So yes, you do need to pay attention to that. And of course, you also need to derate as well. So for example, you need to calculate your maximum voltage using temperature correction the way you normally do for permitting in order to determine compatibility. Great question. Great question. And, and I can tell you, I have already seen one module that exceeds this. Okay. Now that module is probably going to be used in a situation where rapid shutdown is not required. Right. So if you do have a ground mount like a utility system, a very large commercial ground mounted system um, with no, uh, no, no structures uh, other than PV housing structures, then you don't have to comply. And you can, you know, so that that at least would answer the question of, you know, how can anyone use these modules? Right. OK. Um, how do you confirm TS? This is another good one. How do you confirm the TS4F solution is working? Um, because we don't have monitoring, right? This product does only rapid shutdown. That's why it's so cost effective for compliance. But how do we know it's working? A couple of ways, and I answered this online, but, uh, but you can meter the output of a string before it's connected to the inverter. You should get uh, a, the safety voltage of about 0.6 volts per unit. And then after connection, of course, you can verify the operating voltage and make sure that all of those modules are producing power. Okay. Um, and uh, any idea of ballpark price? Uh, pricing varies so much. Uh, you really should check with your distributor or you can contact Tygo Sales, sales at tygoenergy.com, or you can call in and, and ask for the sales option um, if you want to buy standalone. But of course, um, you should call Chint. If you're going to be using a Chint inverter, just call Chint. They can help you with the sales part and pricing. All right. Uh, string voltage calculation. Uh, this is another good one because I do get this one pretty often. Uh, uh, the string voltage calculation is not any different. It's exactly the same with or without TS4F in any form. Okay, We don't modify voltage or current. We only switch it on or off. So your string calculations don't change. Um, will we talk about how this works with an off-grid system? Uh, that's kind of out of scope. Um, we do have, we've done webinars on this and I, um, I would uh, divert your attention to the Tygo uh, Resource Center, which is off of our home so homepage. And there are, in the Tygo Academy section, there's some recorded webinars. Or you can just give me a call and I can uh, go over it with you, okay? But the short answer is, of course, you have an on-off, manual on-off switch that initiates rapid shutdown because there's no grid connection. All right. Um, okay, so a question on SolarEdge and op optimizer failures. Um, so I can tell you that we have the lowest failure rate in the business, the highest reliability. We have um, a return rate. Now, this is just a return rate of less, a very small fraction of 1% of units do we actually ever get back. And almost all of those are either um, installation error or, you know, and for some reason, they're, you know, there's nothing wrong with them, in other words. We call it NTF, no trouble found. So, so, you know, of that, it's a vanishingly small percentage that we ever actually have anything that, you know, anyone could call a failure. Um, and I can tell you um, one thing that we don't, when, when our salespeople configure a system, and I do that a lot with the larger systems, we don't add units for uh, like for backups or for, I don't know, spares. We just don't do that. Um, whereas a lot of our competitors do. That should tell you something right there. All right, remote monitoring, right? So you don't have monitoring with the TS4F, but of course you have monitoring through your Chint inverter and you can see from there, of course, uh, whether or not the system is producing the expected amount of power. Okay, and then there's a question about connectors, which I think we've answered. Um, they're, yeah, standard MC4 connectors. All right, great. And then there's a there's a CPS question. I'll let I'll let um, I'll let Anton take that one. Did you see uh, Anton? It says, does CPS? Yeah, can you read that off? Yeah. Yeah. It says, do CPS inverters have independent test labs performing tests to certify the equipment? So, 
We, so I guess on the inverter side, we do work with um, NRTLs to certify the inverters. Um, but the, the system certification that we talked about in this webinar, the PV rapid shutdown system certification has um, been done by UL. Um, so I guess the answer is, is yes, we, we both uh, work with a, an NRTL to, to certify our inverters um, and our equipment, as well as, you know, having the, the UL PV rapid shutdown system certification. Um, and, you know, if, if you are working on a project and the AHJ um, or inspector is, is asking for, for documentation, um, that is something we can provide. Um, all the certificates uh, for all the testing. Great. Yep. Thanks, Anton. Mm -hmm. um, another question, what um, is the, oh, go, go ahead, Anton. Go ahead. No, go ahead, dear. Okay. Um, yeah, another question, what is the warranty of the PVRSS device? Um, TS4 units are warrantied for 25 years for, for defects in manufacturing. And um, you might, well, Anton, you might as well answer for the, for the chimp part. And, and I, um, yeah, because it's, you know, it's the, they're two, they're two separate, uh, separate things. Right. So that's, yeah, that's the warranty on the, the module level devices and the inverters uh, come with a 10 year standard warranty. And um, we also offer extended warranties as well. Okay. Um, question, what do I do if the inverter doesn't have the in integrated rapid shutdown transmitter? Um, Tygo does sell an add-on uh, transmitter. I know there's at least, uh, there are there is, I think, one Chint inverter that doesn't have it. And if you're using that inverter, you can use the standalone Tygo transmitter. All right. Yeah, I, I will mention, you know, you, you do need to make sure the inverter that you are using um, has been tested and certified uh, for the PV RSS um, requirements. So that's the, the 25 kilowatt, 50 and 60 kilowatt inverters from CPS. Um, so if you are using maybe a, a, a legacy inverter, um, just make sure you know the, the inverters you are using um, are on that PV RSS list. Um, and all of those ones I just mentioned do have the integrated rapid shutdown wire boxes. Um, if you if you do for some reason get in a situation where uh, maybe you have the the standard wire box, um, the the external wire box um, or the external transmitter kit that Gary mentioned can be used um, for those. And the the inverter that um, doesn't have the integrated components um, but is certified with the Tiger TS4 F um, is our 36 kilowatt. And that can be used uh, with that external transmitter kit. Yep. Great. Good to know, Anton. Thanks. All right, let's see. Next question. What section of the NEC allows no fuses for the negative conductor? I think this is kind of out of scope and might be good to take it offline. Um, it's not, this, this kind of thing is no different whether, you're, whether or not you're using um, Tygo TS4. All right. Um, yeah, and we, we can follow up. If you follow up with me, I can, I can help go into the, the codes for that. Yeah. Okay, um, looks like the last question. Are TS4AS and TS4AO also compatible with the CPS integrated RSS solution? I'll, I'll let uh, Anton take that one. Yeah, so with the, the F products, F for fire safety, um, we have the certified solution for rapid shutdown, um, but our R&D team and engineering team has done the, the further diligence um, and, and testing for compatibility performance um, with those fire safety products with our inverters, um, which we have not done with the dash S or the dash O. Um, so we are basically offering the, the dash F products only um, and not the dash S or dash O um, currently. 
All right. Okay, let's see. There are a few more questions in the chat window. What, how are we doing time-wise, Anton? Uh, we've got a few more minutes um, to to take a few more. One one question we've gotten on the um, I guess it's more on the inverted side, but um, uh, CEC listing and whether the um, the system can be installed uh, for projects in California and the all the inverters that uh, that we mentioned in this webinar, the CPS 25, 50, and 60 kilowatt inverters, are all um, on the CEC list for eligible equipment, um, so can be uh, used uh, for interconnections in California. Great. Okay, um, a question in the chat window, what does leader and rapid shutdown mean? Uh, mainly I was referring to the fact that we have more experience than anyone else. As I said, our very first products that came out in 2008 had uh, the capability to do what we now call rapid shutdown. And so that's what I mean by leader. We, we definitely led the way in that kind of functionality. And we have a lot of IP in this area, um, intellectual property, patents. We have several uh, around uh, the way our rapid shutdown works. Okay, I think everything else was answered. Yeah, Gary, one, one other question that we've, we've gotten um, is, can the dash 2F product uh, be used if strings um, have an odd number of modules? So oh. I'll, I'll let you take that one. Excellent question. Yeah, I, get, I, I, get, I get that question yeah. a lot. Um, yeah, so yeah. actually there's, there's a lot of different ways to go about that. Um, one thing is if you, if you want to completely minimize uh, cost, you can use one of the single units on the odd numbered uh, module. And those, uh, those, those products are all compatible, uh, cross compatible with each other. So you can mix singles and doubles in the same string even, no problem. Uh, another thing you can do, and some people prefer to just have the same SKU for, for the entire system, and if you're using all A2F, you can just um, plug the unused leads together um, on the unused channel on the odd numbered, um, for the odd numbered uh, unit at the end. So that's how to deal with that. Great question. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Hey, uh, this is Peter, sorry to interrupt. Uh... I think I saw a question, uh, when is the uh, uh, CPS 25 kilowatts OA volt output uh, machine available? I uh, just wanna get the news out there. It is available uh, for uh, a purchase order right now. The CEC listing uh, we, expect, we expect to be ready early October. So you can place PO right now, uh, file for interconnection. We expect all the testing certification to be done uh, early mid-September but actual CC listing to be done early October just due to the, the time that it needs to update the website. Yeah, and that's, and that's really super and great news. Uh, I, get, I get quite a few calls from customers who need a 208, uh, a 208 volt um, inverter and don't have too many choices. So I think it's great to see another, another option out there in the market, super. Great, thank you. Thanks, Peter. Okay, let me just review here. Yeah, I think we're getting close to the end, so maybe one more question, um, then we'll wrap up. And yeah, if there are any others, um, feel free to, to follow up um, with us. There was one question about grounding um, with TS4, and that is not ever required. There's no special grounding required with TS4. You simply clip it to the module frame and connect the MC4 connectors and you're done. No special grounding. Got it. Well, thanks, Gary. Um, yeah, I think, I think we'll wrap up here. And my, again, my contact information is below. If, if you have any further questions, feel free to follow up. Um, and we, we will be sending out uh, the, the recording and slides as well to everyone. So I um, want to thank, thank Gary. Um, thank you for presenting with me today, and thanks, everyone, for, for joining today's webinar. Yes, thanks, Anton, and thank you, everyone. We appreciate your attention and your time. 
uh, hopefully you came away with some useful information and uh, knowledge of some great products that you can buy from Chen.